Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Everybody's doing well and ready for turkey and stuffing and pie. Oh my. All right. Well, it is great to have you here in the building and those of you who are watching and joining us online or on our, uh, our toll-free phone line, we're glad to have you all here this morning. A uh, couple of things I'd like to mention. First of all, one of the things that's new to us in the midst of this new reality that we have is, is online streaming and new audio stuff and all that. And so we are looking for people who would be interested in learning how to do that stuff. <laughs> so if you are interested in uh, video or the computer stuff, you know, the slides that we do, learning how to run the sound system, uh, it's, it's, it's different than it was over in the church, but it's uh, not that complicated and uh, it would be a big help to us. So if you're interested in that, if you'd speak to me or to Andrew uh, or probably Jeff too, uh, we would love to, uh, to get you uh, sort of acclimatized to our new digital reality uh, as we enter into that phase of life. A couple of other things to mention. Uh, first of all, this is the last Sunday for you to order the photo books uh, that are, uh, depict the, the, our old building and uh, some of the architecture of that. And so if you are looking to get a hold of one of those books, you can order it this morning. It's $25. You can do them right at the back there where Jen is uh, at the Welcome Center. She would love to, to help you with that. And if you uh, can't do it today, if you want to come in by tu on Tuesday, that's the last day. We're going to be making an order sometime on Tuesday or Wednesday uh, to get the orders in for the books. Um, and so they hopefully we'll have them within a few weeks. Uh, to, uh, to hand out to you. So if you want to order a book, we'd like you to get that done as soon as possible. Also, the offering plates are at the back. Again, we're not going to pass the plates in the midst of this. So if you have an offering that you'd like to give, there is plates at the back at the Welcome Center and on the table on your way out this morning. And I want to give you just a brief update on our reset campaign. And the reset campaign is our campaign to raise $100,000 by the end of 2021 for uh, our transition from the church building into the CE Center here as our main sort of building as we uh, look to, to get the uh, other building gone and to move into here and be completely uh, working fully in here. And so as of today, or as of the end of, sorry, not today, where it's probably a little bit more than that now, but as of the end of September, uh, we had raised about $19,100 already and so that's a terrific, uh, terrific thing, and we're really excited about that and uh, thankful for everyone's support in the midst of, of that campaign and, and seeing that these things are going to be able to happen the way that, that we believe God is leading us to get them done. And so uh, we just ask you to continue to pray for that, uh, for the whole idea that we've, we've, we've put a lot of work in. And you'll see a video later that will show some of the, the people who have done a lot of work over the last number of weeks and months to get us to, uh, to this point. Continue to pray as well that we'll be able to continue to do this. Uh, as you know, in Moncton and Campbellton now, um, people who were meeting on Sunday mornings are now not meeting on Sunday morning. And we're hoping that that doesn't become our reality, but it may. And so we want to continue to be diligent in following uh, what we need to do. The other thing I need to ask you, we are hoping to do a Halloween event. As you remember, the last few years, we've done a trunk or treat out in the parking lot here. Last year, we had... 1,200 kids, families lined up down to the rink uh, who walked through to get candy. And at the end, I think we were giving them each one little piece of a rocket. Uh, here you go, here you go. Uh, but they were lined up forever. Anyway, we can't do that this year. It just, it's just not a good idea in the midst of, uh, of, of the pandemic. And so what we want to do, if you remember at Easter time, uh, we did a family car scavenger hunt. And so we had people who had host houses and they had to put up a little decoration in their window, uh, that kind of a thing. And so that's what we're thinking about doing again. And we'd like to have about 10 or 12 homes on the west side who would put up something. We don't know exactly what that will be yet. And it will be a clue as families drive around. It won't be on Halloween night. It'll be a night before Halloween. They'll drive around, get the clue, and then eventually arrive back to here where they will receive some sort of a treat bag or a, a prize that we'll give them. So we need host homes. You don't have to interact with anybody. You just have to put up the, whatever the clue would be. And the other thing we're going to need is candy. So if you are able to do that or you're interested in that, if you would let Andrew know, and Andrew right now is in the back. He's doing all, all this techie stuff. Uh, but he would love to hear from you. If you want to message us, call us, send us an email. 
uh, or just speak to one of us this morning uh, after the service. We would love to, uh, to talk to you about that. Again, after the service, we're going to dismiss our online congregation, and then I'm just going to ask the congregation here to just continue to remain seated until we dismiss you. We'll ask that you exit the, the side aisles and go out the back and try to maintain as best you can your social distancing and all of those kinds of things. <sighs> Happy Thanksgiving. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. Good morning. Good to see you here. Please stand and sing. You choose the humble and raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You heal our brokenness inside. And give us
God for this time together and we give you thanksgiving and we, we express our joy for everything you've done Lord and we thank you in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning again. Welcome back to week two of Don't Be a Jerk. I need you to remember. You're so good at remembering those things. Don't be a jerk. Living in the fruit of the Spirit. And um, we, uh, we talked last week a bit about Paul telling us in Galatians 5, 22 and 23 that if we are growing in our relationship with God, if we're growing in our relationship with God, if we're allowing the, the Holy Spirit to actually fill us and dwell us and to encourage us and strengthen us and, and pray for us and convict us and lead us, then we should also be growing in our demonstration of the fruit of the Spirit. And Paul said that the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, and 23, he says this, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. But the reality that we know in our world is that um, there's a lot of rotten fruit out there. There's a lot of rotten fruit in our world. There's a lot of hatred and racism and anger and jealousy and people trying to stir up trouble and dissension and all of that kind of stuff. But the reality for us, if we claim to be followers of Jesus, the reality is we shouldn't be jerks. We shouldn't be the ones who are full of hatred and anger and jealousy and starting trouble and all of those kinds of things. Our lives, rather, should be demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit to the world around us. Living out the reality of God's extravagant love to the people who are closest to us. Not being jerks. So we said last week the fruit of the Spirit is love. This week, the fruit of the Spirit not only is love, but the fruit of the Spirit is joy. And what a great Sunday, Thanksgiving Sunday, to think about joy. Because I think the two things, Thanksgiving and joy, really go together well. Demonstrating joy comes when a person lives their life in such a way that they are overflowing with thankfulness. And when we overflow with thankfulness and we express thankfulness, our joy becomes complete. Now I know over the last several months, Many of us have not always had a whole lot of things seemingly to be happy about or maybe even be joyful about. Some people we know have lost loved ones. They haven't been able to, to celebrate properly the lives of those people that they've lost with family and friends. Right? Schools went on March break for six months. Uh, you know, the, and, and then people were like homeschooled. <laughs> homeschooled, what's that? Ah, we didn't do that very well, 
right? So there was, there was all of that. You know, kids couldn't be with their friends or whatever for a long, long time. And we haven't been able to meet together in church until just the last few weeks to be able to gather together like this for worship. And the reality is there are churches today in the Moncton and Campbellton regions that, that just, they can't now. They had all these plans and everything to meet together today, and, and they couldn't because of the pandemic. But the good news for us today is that we have reason to be thankful. Right? They're, we're able to, to get to doctor's appointments now, maybe, that we couldn't, to, couldn't before. Look, the reality for me in the pandemic was, I don't have to go to my doctor anymore. <laughs> she can just call me. It, she's like the cable company, though, because she says, I'll call between 2 and 8. I'm like, oh, okay. But she just calls. I don't have to drive all the way to Sussex, which is wonderful. You know, so those, that's a good thing. But the other realities for us is that schools back, parents everywhere are full of joy. Yes. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, Anglophone South School District. We're so happy. Right? That, that's just the reality, right? We're, we're back on track in, in some ways and things are looking relatively good and we're able to be here today to be thankful. Many people are going to gather with family and friends in some regions today to celebrate Thanksgiving with one another. That's good. We can be thankful. The three verses that we're going to read in just a minute are from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. And, and they're written in the context of, of Paul writing to these people as followers of Jesus in a local church and encouraging them to be, to be uh, number one, to be uh, appreciative of the people who lead them, to be encouraging to them and appreciative of the leadership of their church, but then also to, to those who are in the church who aren't very active, who aren't maybe stepping up and taking their sort of roles seriously. He's saying you need to step up and, 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 and serve better or serve more or serve more fully in the, in the ministry of the local church in that community. And then he says, but there are also people within the church who are weak and timid and hurting. People who are going through difficult stuff. And the rest of you who are in the church should be coming alongside those people and putting your arms around them and encouraging them and, and loving them and helping them and serving them and, and, and helping them to grow in their own understanding of what it means to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. And so, in other words, if you read 1 Thessalonians 5, like 12 to 15, that we're not going to read this morning, essentially my paraphrase of it is this from Paul. Be kind, don't be a jerk. Be kind to each other, help one another, serve one another, encourage one another. Don't be jerks. Don't be jerks. And then he gets to chapter 5, verses 16, 17, and 18. And in that, Paul says these three very quick, short verses that uh, many of us have probably heard before. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be joyful always. Pray continually. And give thanks. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be joyful always. It sounds a bit like a stretch to me in, in some ways. But the reality for us that, that we have to understand is that being joyful is not necessarily dependent upon our circumstance. Being joyful isn't necessarily dependent upon how happy we might be. Being joyful isn't necessarily dependent upon what we are going through in the moment. In other words, you can go through difficult times, difficult circumstances, difficult situations, difficult seasons of life, and still experience and demonstrate joy. And that comes when we are people who are following Jesus and we are allowing the Holy Spirit to, to, to fill us and to be in us and to lead us and guide us and direct us and encourage us and convict us and all that stuff. And we put our trust Rather than in the situation and the circumstance that is difficult, we're putting our faith and our trust in the God who will lead us through it. In the Spirit who will help us get through it. In the Spirit who will fill us and direct us and lead us in the midst of whatever situation or circumstance that we might not actually be happy in in the moment. You see, sometimes we confuse joy 
and happiness. Sometimes we use them interchangeably and we think joy and happiness are the same things. And the reality is they're not really the same things. Joy, in terms of what Paul is talking about, in terms of what we read in the scripture, joy is often really more, it has more to do with with making a choice because of what God has done already for us. What he has done in us, what he's continuing to do in us. That we choose to be joyful which means we can be joyful always even in the midst of difficult circumstances or situations. Happiness, you see, depends upon external circumstances. It, happens on, it depends on what's going on around us and what happens to us from the outside. It's been interesting over the, the three um, short-term missions that I have been on over the last number of years to see the amount of joy that we find in people that that maybe on first look you would think, what do they have to be joyful for? But the reality is the difference comes in that understanding between why are they joyful or are they happy? When we were in the Philippines in 2014, we met people who were full of joy, but had every reason to not be happy. I mean, we worked shoulder to shoulder uh, with, 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 with people who had lost their homes, well, I, I mentioned that we, we worked with one uh, guy and I remember working with him and he was singing to himself and he's working away and he's talking to me and he spoke English, which was great. So we were working away and, and in the midst of the conversation that we were having, I said, he's working on this house. This wasn't his house. He was helping his neighbor. And I said, oh, well, what, you know, how did you make out through the typhoon when it hit here? And he said, well, do you see that like tree that fell down right over there? And I said, yes, there's this huge coconut tree laying in the, just in the middle of what appeared to be this open space. And he goes, that's where my house was. And I said, oh, where's your house? He goes, I don't know. I said, you mean you don't know? He goes, well, it was pretty windy. And it blew away. It literally blew away. Like it wasn't even like parts of it blew off. The whole house blew away. And here he was. He literally had nothing left but a coconut tree laying across where his house was. And here he was pounding nails with me and singing away. And he's like, oh, you're from Canada. He said, do you know John in Vancouver? And I'm like, you have no clue how big this country is. Right? But but he was so full of joy, but at the same time, not happy that he lost his house. He he wasn't happy that that his, his family didn't have a home now, but he was full of joy to be willing to serve and to help other people. There was a big difference between joy and happiness. When, when I was in Lebanon in, in 2016, I, I mean, we met uh, at this one particular uh, church. It was like a satellite church that met in an apartment building. We met people there who, who essentially were Syrian refugees who had paid people to help them sneak into Lebanon. They, we, and we saw the, the, some of the, the places where they would have climbed from Damascus over the mountains into the back of valley, into Lebanon, where they are not welcomed, where they are not well thought of, where they are actually probably hated quite deeply because of the previous war between the two nations. And, 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 and these people were full of joy. And we're like, why are you full of joy? And they're like, because we asked where we could get help. And somebody said, go to this church they will help you. And they went to this church, and this uh, gentleman, his name was Bassam Haddad. He was a volunteer from another church, and he was helping there. And he said we would give them maybe laundry detergent. And we would talk to them about Jesus, and we would show love to them, and we would... And these people came to faith. And they began to follow Jesus, and it changed their lives. But at the same time, these people had lost loved ones in the war. They had lost everything that they had in the war. And now here they were in Lebanon where they were treated like garbage by most of the people in Lebanon, by the government of Lebanon. They weren't recognized as people. Essentially, they they had no rights. Hard to hold any kind of job because you had no no right to, to fight against a boss at all. And they weren't happy about those situations. They weren't happy about those realities. But in the midst of that, they still exuded joy because of the life that they had from the people who had showed it to them in Christ. 
In, in, in El Salvador, it was the same thing. I mean, we met with that church in El Salvador that, that, that our group went, met with, and they just they didn't have much. I mean, we met the pastor. He was going through a really difficult marriage situation on his own, and he was so full of joy. So full of joy. Had a very difficult situation in his own marriage, difficult situations in their community. They get hard to get clean water. You know, they didn't have much in terms of material things. But they exuded joy. They overflowed with joy. And everywhere they went, you could see it. And people in the community knew it and they saw it in the way that they served and helped the people in their community. The joy was so real and so tangible and so life-changing. It made a difference to their community. The Thessalonians that Paul wrote to, they were not strangers to suffering. They weren't strangers to, to persecution. And so it was clear to them that when Paul said this, it was clear to them that what they needed was not only this, this strong relationship with God, but also with one another, because that would make their joy complete. Because when they were being decent to one another, when they were practicing the fruit of the Spirit to one another and to the people who were around them, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, when they were living those things out in their world and not being jerks to each other, it made all the difference. It changed things. No matter what their circumstance, no matter what they were facing, no matter what they went through, when joy became their foundation, they were okay. Paul says, be joyful always. He says, pray continually. Now, this doesn't mean that we should be like, dear God, thank you for this day, all the time. You know, that, do you remember the, what was the prayer we used to pray when we were kids? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray, it's really, it's kind of a scary prayer. I pray the Lord my soul to keep, right? But, but that's, a, that's kind of the thing. It's not just about this. It's about being constantly aware of the presence of God in our lives at every moment. Wherever we are, whoever we're with, whatever we're doing, that God wants to be in the midst with us. He wants to be there with us in, in the good times and the bad times and the ups and the downs, whatever it is that we're facing. He wants to be there and using his Holy Spirit in us and through us to demonstrate those things, his extravagant love by love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. He wants to do that in us and through us wherever we are. And so he says, pray continually, be constantly aware of God's presence in your life. Be constantly aware of God's presence in your life so that you know that when you go through the difficult times, you're not just going through difficult times on your own, and it's not just you and God, it's you and God and all the people of God who come around you to encourage you and strengthen you and ultimately make your joy complete. Verse 18, so he's, be joyful always, pray continually, and then he says, give thanks in all circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks. It's a bit of a command, right? Do this. Express it. Get it out there. It, it will fulfill your joy. It will make it complete when you express what you're thankful for. So give thanks. Give it. Express it. When you express it, when you name your gratefulness, when you name what you are thankful for, what you can do is discover fulfillment and satisfaction and joy, even if in the midst of it, things aren't going so great. Even when you're in the middle of a global pandemic, you can still experience joy. In 2003, uh, there was a study that was done on the effect of expressing gratitude. And so they took this group of people who had some health issues and they said, you know, every day for five or 10 minutes, would you take just, just a couple of minutes and, and write down something that you're thankful for? Write down a few things that maybe you're thankful for that day. And they asked people to do that for a few weeks. And, and over that time, what they discovered in these people was generally that they had a more positive outlook on life. They were more willing to serve other people. They had improved health benefits that included better sleep, less stress, less, lower blood pressure, and just a general improvement of their mood. And so the conclusion, really, of that study was what Paul, the reason that Paul gave that instruction to the Thessalonians to give thanks in all circumstances. And it's this, that expressing our thankfulness can make us more joyful. It fulfills us 
even in difficult times, even in hard circumstances, even when things aren't going perfectly, when we face minor or major annoyances or situations, when it's expressed, what a difference it can make in our lives, but what a difference it can make in the lives of others. When we express it, when we express our thanks to God, we find satisfaction in our relationship with Him. It gives Him honor and glory and worship and and expressed from us in the form of joyful worship. When we live out that reality of joy in our lives to day to day to the people who are around us, not only does it continue to give us joy, but it will spread that joy. It will share that joy with the people who are around us. It creates satisfaction and fulfillment and really in many senses completes our joy. You see, jerks aren't very good at expressing joy. Jerks are good at expressing jerkiness, jerky things, annoying things. They're good at expressing anger and annoyance and frustration. They're not good at expressing joy. And we who claim to be Jesus followers need to be growing in our expression of joy. And being joyful, even in times where we aren't all that happy, will make us experience more joy. And it will make a difference for us. It gives us a reason to be thankful. It gives us a reason to be demonstrating to others the power that Jesus has to make a meaningful difference in the lives of people in the midst of anything that we face. Joy becomes that that, that undergirding, that foundation that we need when we face those things that are tough and difficult for us to go through. So I want to give you some homework today. Uh, you can call it your uh, don't be a jerk challenge if you want. I don't care what you call it. But, but the reality is I want to give you some homework. And what I want you to do is to take some time today, tomorrow, and the next couple of days to, to either on your own or when you're together with family or friends over the next couple of days to, to just express your thankfulness something that you're thankful for, a few things that you're thankful for, to actually say it out loud or to write it down, but to just express it and to grow in joy. Paul says, be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have loved us with such an extravagant love and you have desired to fill us with such an amazing joy. And Father, we pray that in the midst of whatever it is that each one of us is facing today, that you would continue to help us learn more of what it means to be full of joy, to make our joy complete and to share that and to give it away to the people who are around us even in the midst of times when we're not that happy. Strengthen us with the foundation of your joy, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we are now, the crowd assembled, peace like silence. The air, men and women, the sounds of children, young and old, have come to share in the same.
This is our church, our family of faith. On this holy ground, we're all the same. And we are the joy of God on display. Whenever we meet in Jesus' name. Well, this is our church, our family of faith. On this holy ground. I won't specifically point out some of my favorite parts in that, but uh, there are some favorites. I'm going to ask you to stand and sing this last song with me, and um, it's a song uh, that uh, any time, well, with uh, Pastor Wayne preaching on joy, any time I think of joy in a song, this, this song pops up in my head, and it's by Chris Tomlin, it's called, How Can I Keep From Singing Your Praise?
as we, uh, as we close this morning, I just want to ask you to be in prayer. As many of you will know Shirley Miller, a member of a congregation. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Shirley, in this past week, had a, a massive stroke and is now in palliative care at the hospital. And so we ask you to be praying for Shirley and her family uh, at this difficult time for them. And uh, just continue to pray in the midst of uh, all that's going on around us with the pandemic, that uh, we're able to continue to keep things sort of calm down as best we can to continue to be able to, to meet together and move as freely as we're able to move right now. So uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this place, for this day, and for this opportunity we have to gather together and to say thanks. And so God, as we go from this place today back to our homes, to our families, to our friends, to, to celebrate Thanksgiving, to eat together, to be together, uh, we pray that you would help us to make our joy complete. Help us to express our thankfulness and to experience the depths and the riches of your love and your joy in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask the congregation here to please be seated as we dismiss our online congregation uh, first.